Hi there, I'm hoping to show you how to design a simple stained glass window using Adobe Illustrator. Um, it's quite a good program which is we have on all the college computers. Um, I'll just bumble along at it and you can always re-watch it a few times if it gets confusing. Uh, I want to start off by making a new project. Um, you can set the height and the width of it. It's set to points at the moment. I tend to prefer to have it as um, inches. So I want to change that in the preferences. Preferences. Um, oh, where are we looking? Units. So it's set to points at the moment. We can have it in centimeters, inches, or millimeters. We'll go with inches just because uh, lead came tends to be sized in that way. File new, um, so it's 11 inches by 16 inches at the moment. Let's make it uh, 12 inches by 12 inches. Uh, you can leave everything else pretty much as it stands. Got a nice square board now. Uh, set that to transparent, it means you can see through. If you leave it on a color, when you start making shapes, it fills them in and it gets very confusing. Um, we also want to change the thing so you can see the grid. Um, these big squares are inch squares, which is good because it means if you're printing anything out, it will print out to exact sizes. So if you're trying to fit your window in somewhere, you'll be in good shape. Um, what else do we need to change? Um, View, snap to point, snap to grid, height grid. These are quite good settings to mess around with. Um, do like you would expect. Um, and, well, allow it to draw to the grid. I'm going to drag out a, a square using the square tool. I'm holding down left click, drag it out. To where I want it. Um, now, if you should find it's not the perfect size because you're not turned snap grid on, you can do uh, oh, view snap to grid, and then we can uh, using this hollow selection tool. Oh, I don't know that one. Aha, uh -huh. we can move the individual sides of our box this way and that way. Much the same as Photoshop, really, on that regard. Uh, oh, we need to change our line width to uh, ooh, 0 0.0625, which is a sixteenth of an inch as a decimal. Okay, now we've got a nice sixteenth of an inch line, which will be the border of our window. Uh, then I'm going to grab the line tool, which is over here. Um, and drag a line down. Hey presto, we've got another line. Same again over here. Now I'm holding the shift key uh, when I drag a line. Um, what that does, it, it constrains um, any line you're drawing to um, kind of 45 degrees or right angles or vertical. Um, if you do it without them, you, you can kind of get lines anywhere, if that makes sense. Uh, zooming in is uh, control plus and minus, just so you know. Uh, let's draw another line across here, again using the shift click key to constrain the line to a right angle. And we've got a little border to our um, window design. Now I want to find the middle of this so to do that I'm just gonna draw some lines across corner to corner which should just help me know where the middle of the window is. Uh, now some of these buttons along the left hand side have got little triangles in the corners this means they have other features hidden behind them 
So we used this square tool previously. If you um, left click on it and hold on to it, you see the other buttons underneath. I want the ellipse tool, which, which is how we draw circles. I'm going to hold the constraint button again and drag, left click, drag a circle out. Um, <coughs> again, it can, um, the shift key constrains it so it comes out round. If you don't hold the shift key down, you get ellipses and lots of squidged up shapes. <coughs> now, I want, I want to centralize this circle so it's uh, in the middle of our panel. I'm going to do that using the arrow keys. Um, and you can go up, down, left, right until you've got it just where you want it. Um, I'm happy with that there. Now comes the tricky bit. Um, I want I want four of these circles kind of rotated round the, the center point. Now if I remember correctly, we click this tool over here on the left, which is the rotate tool, and you get this little tiny blue uh, center point, which you need to drag down to there, which is where we want it to rotate around. And then I think we press Alt. On click, there we go. <coughs> now this is the, the rotate dialog, um, and it describes how many degrees we want to rotate. But I found a clever way of doing this. Say we want four of them. There's 360 degrees in a circle um, divided by four. So 360 divided by 4 then we want to press copy because if we just press OK it will take our original circle and just move it round <coughs> which is no use um, so we hit copy and hey presto we have another circle moved then we go to uh, object transform again which will do the same action again transform again control D so this time I'll press Control D for the last one, and hey presto, we've got our window design. Now, sh um, should we not want these center lines? I'll show you how to remove them. Um, this this arrow tool selects all the area to move around. The the hollow one will just let you select individual parts. At the moment, we've just got this circle here selected. You can see the blue on it. But we just click on the line, now that line's selected, hit the delete key, and off it goes. Nice simple window design. Now, should we want to print this out, we would go to File, then down here to Print. And we've got um, many different options. Uh, the important one, if you're doing a stained glass, window is do not scale it because we need we need to have the window full size um, you've got a little bit of a preview window here um, and what you'll have to do because the um, the window is bigger than I suppose it's an A4 sheet of paper but you can print it on A3 but if it's bigger than that first the first image you print is that half of it and then you shovel it over here a bit print out the other half. Easy as that. Um, thanks for watching.